Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Chris Spivey, and we're going to talk about Harlem Unbound. So let me ask you this first. Uh, again, I love your book. Where did the foundation of the ideas for this book come from? So that's um, a little bit of a more complicated story that I'll try to, to squeeze down to you and to, for a, a couple minute answer. Um, a large part of it comes from the fact that my cousin is Ornell Hurston. So I've always had some aspect of the Harlem Renaissance as part of my life growing up. So it's always been a little nugget in the back of my brain. Um, I first encountered the mythos probably when I was at an estate sale with some friends, which an estate sale is when a person passes away. They have, for us, a group of kids come in, box up all their stuff, and then we spent the night there. And that night, one of the things the person had was this book of Lovecraft, like a complete collection of Lovecraft. And everyone else was asleep. I was in my little sleeping bag with my flashlight, reading through, reading The Outsider. And I was had this sense of association with someone that was always an outsider, never really quite fitting in. And that spurred my interest to learn about the mythos, which then led me to Call of Cthulhu. And then I learned of the actual ardent racist history of Lovecraft associated with that. So that was a something that pained me personally to try to say that I, I understand like this cosmic horror and this otherness that is indescribable and always being alone and isolated, being written by an absolutely racist piece of crap. And I wanted to address some of those issues. And having played the Dead Man Stomp scenario, I think was in Call of Cthulhu 5.6 edition when it came out. And that, they had an adventure that touched just briefly on Harlem which was about a, a horn man that gets a cursed horn and he's playing it and it sort of raises the dead. And in the side of the scenario, there's one little snippet that said, that basically says racism is bad. And that was beyond offensive, but the scenario was as close as I ever had to seeing something that would identify with me as a black gamer running Call of Cthulhu. And so I, I give thanks to Lynn Wills and Mark Morrison, who have actually now become friends with Mark, for doing that because that inspired me that if they could do that there with what I know about Harlem and history and everything else, I could tell this story that needs to be told to try to make it more engaging and welcoming for people like me. And then became the crusade a little bit later in life when I was going around promote trying to get publishers to jump on the idea of I've got this book about racism and gaming and Lovecraft and the mythos, would you publish it? And I got a round of no's. No one wants to read it. No one wants to see it. And that won't sell. Oh, so how did, how, how did you convince them to, to, uh, to accept this project? Sorry, I'm, I'm just curious. At what, what point would they say, okay, we're going to print this after all? Or maybe, maybe you don't want to share that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to push you. Well, uh, I, I don't know if I can use profanity. So I, I will refrain from using the word that first comes to mind. But I will use a variant of it and said, and I said to myself, well, bunk you, I don't need you to do this. I can do it myself. And that's when I basically formed Darker Hue Studios to promote the idea that you can like increase diversity and inclusion in gaming through creating products that highlight people like myself and other marginalized people that we are actually a predominant force in gaming that have always been overlooked. And I published the book. It was kickstarted. I think we made almost nine times as much as I asked for. And it now exists. It won three gold innies, which I am super proud of. It won the an IGN, IGDN award. Uh, we were nominated for a Diana Jones award. And after all those accolades, because we're also accepted into museums, it's being taught in, in different universities right now. Heosium came to me at Gen Con a year or two ago and said, hey, we would like to do a second edition of your book. Hmm. Okay. Now, what what's the difference between the first edition and second edition exactly? Uh, about a year of my life. <laughs> so, uh, I guess more detail than that. So, the first edition, when I made it, growing up in Alabama, I didn't have a lot of money. I wanted to make sure the book, if you bought it, is a complete core book and you can play it without anything else. So, I approached Pilgrim Press and I talked to... Simon and Kat about if I could use their logo. While the gumshoe system itself is a complete OGL, I wanted to have Pelgrane's backing and support because people would see the Pelgrane sticker and then they'd be more than likely to engage with it and consider it an actual product for their table. After which 
started negotiations with Chaosium about becoming a licensee for them so I could use a 7th edition rule set, which also garners more eyes and more people to come and support the project. And after all of... Sorry, I'm still talking about the first edition. So with all of those elements inside the first edition book, which was a dual status system, so it had gumshoe and it had 7th edition. And for the second edition, we had to completely remove all the gumshoe elements because there's a strictly... Chaosium published darker hue book. And since I had all that new free space, and I'd also figured out some things I wanted to do differently, because the book itself, while it's focused on the Harlem Renaissance, is also a tribute to Harlem. Without Harlem, the US would be vastly different. Um, the Battle of Harlem Heights was where Washington won his first battle in the American Revolution that rebolsters his confidence in the spirit of the troops. Without that, who knows what language we'd be speaking right now. And all that's centered on Harlem. And with that in mind, for the new edition, I removed one scenario and I supplemented in four new ones. So you've lost Gumshoe, but you've got four brand new scenarios that sort of art by year. So it forms a, a loosely based mini campaign if someone wanted to play it. One of which that I am super proud of is I worked with uh, Steffi Van Dyne to write a 1680s Harlem scenario in the book. For anyone that wants to game master this or be a keeper for this i should say um, any advice about books or movies they can watch to get a the experience of what it was like in the 1920s harlem so i don't know about the experience but to give them a, a better reference point i have all of that information actually listed in the book and it has some of them are movies some of them are documentaries some of them are actually books some of them is just art from the time music and all that's listed there and recently since someone asked on twitter i even created a my playlist for my next harm unbound game oh excellent okay that I post it up for everyone okay um uh, tell us about the art about this book um uh, uh what can you tell us about the why and how you picked the art for it well, for those who don't know, the Harlem Renaissance itself was a, a time of political and social change that was motivated and moved primarily through debate, academics, writing, literature, journalism, and art and music. And without the slew of artists in the time, I went through all the different different things to see which ones I liked the best. And I sort of put together a palette of different sort of art and Brennan Reese and I sort of worked together to create the distinctive look of the book. And Brennan is incredibly talented, which is why I wanted him to make the cover. And it has a lot of different shout outs to styles and some people in it. I'm not going to tell anyone. If you can figure it out, feel free to send me a tweet and we can talk about it. <laughs> are, are there any plans to do a continuation of the book in any way? I, I'm torn because I have other projects I want to work on, but I've gotten a lot of people that want me to do something else, and I have four very solid ideas. So it depends on how the second edition sales go and how much I like working with Chaosium about whether or not, while our contract is there, I want to do a scenario book that I have in mind that is a, a detailed, thick, probably about six different scenarios that are interlinked that tell a, a this, another story of Harlem. Oh, okay, and speaking of projects, uh, I know you have... Um... Uh, the Haunted West coming out in the end of December. Um, is there anything else you're working on that you would want to share with uh, fans of your work? Um, so one of the big projects since it is out, originally Chaosium and I were going to do a science fiction book together, but they have their own sort of printing things that they were trying to accomplish and the timeline didn't match up. So the Afro-Judeo science fiction project uh, I was probably going to be my next thing that I do. So people should keep an eye out. I've been working on it off and on again for about a year, year and a half. So it's fairly well scoped out. Okay, excellent. And, and it gives me a chance to do less historical research that takes about a year to year and a half of my life every book. So for anyone who wants to purchase Harlem Unbound or where can they go to get it? So there's two editions. You can buy the first edition from my website which is still an amazing book, and that cover is only available in the first edition. Or you could buy the second edition from Chaosium's website that gives you the nifty new scenarios and a lot of the actual text itself. I use some of my new skills I developed over the past three, three years to edit and adjust and add additional depth and meaning to some of the scenarios in the writing. 
Okay, excellent. Well, again, thank you so much for your time and thank you viewers for checking us out and we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody. Thank you.